Welcome to The Advocate, where topical issues are discussed in a no-holds-barred manner. In other words, we call a spade by its name. Today, my advocacy is based on the whole clamor for restructuring. A good plan or a plot? Kingsley is here to clarify the difference between a leader and a ruler. Yemi, who joins us for the first time, is taking us on music lessons today as he focuses on the impact of music on the human mind and body. According to Kurt Cobain, the duty of youth is to challenge corruption. And Kemak is here to point out the strength of the African and Nigerian youth. Sit back, your panelists are here to present your Sunday dose of provoking thoughts with no holds barred after this break. Restructuring, a plan or a plot? Pre-election in Nigeria, always a word is picked and beaten up to whip up sentiment and create an electoral nirvana that is void of practicality. This is to say the word has basis, but what exactly does it mean? Or do we share the same definition of the word when we use it in different contexts? The word restructure means a lot to a different lot of people. I will first begin with our definitions of the words based on our vocations in life or politics. To a common man, this will be used from a point of separation of powers from the center, though already provided by the constitution and abused by political party vehicles. To deny governance to the people. I would add at this juncture, the common man gets it but his political inexperience wouldn't allow him clamor for this take. For example, the issue of state policing, we are all aware any separation of power must mean all tiers of governance and arms of governance being allowed to function. On matters like this, the president is mobbed in bare parlor discussions and online keeper terrorists. Meanwhile, this powers to enact such laws is in the powers of the rather lackadaisical National Assembly, whom instead of primarily focusing on bill amendments and oversight of the executive, are yet to be weaned off constituency project feeding bottles. Now we move to the governors. The governors will define restructuring as the free hand to handle state natural resources without influence of the federal government. While these may seem noble, it can't be done till the emperors of state stop the organized kidnap of a tier of government, which is the local government. The state governments confiscate their financial resources. It's like asking nicely for a cookie while your hand is still in the cookie jar. Now we'll look at the federal. This level of government sees restructuring as a harm to its powerful dominance, like a system of control, forgetting that the real power is vested in economic growth and true democracy can only thrive while powers are being devolved properly. It understands the greed of state governors and the federal has used this to their advantage and uses the kidnap of the LG by states to um, twist the state governments for their resources. In times of old, people ran nations for the matter of sovereignty and power. But moving towards the modern times, the only advancement afforded a country is when it is run like a business and every part is contributing to a planned quota of growth. Well, back to the perspectives on a word that has become champion to the opposition and also to the government and a wet dream to the electorate. In my opinion, we always say politics is local. Why don't we ever say governance is local? The inability to understand that the local government is the first handshake of democracy to the people. If we understood what was needed, we would rise for local government police, which would guarantee security at the lowest cluster of governance. We would also rise for its autonomy and would give it rights to natural resources and etc. Let's remember the governance of lo local units live within us and can be held accountable easier than the number one houses in the state or the most protected drive 
in Abuja. So, restructuring. Well, I think, um, like you rightly pointed out, we do have a culture in Nigeria of, you know, spotting and resounding right-sounding phrases over and over and over. And when you look at um, the reality on ground and you look at the advocacy that's going on or the repeated use of these words, it becomes really difficult to tie it together. It seems, like you just said, it's just um, a fad that we throw around, you know. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah rather than going deep into the roots of the issue. It's interesting because personally I have a different idea of restructuring. <laughs> And this is why I have a different idea, because the truth is that in Nigeria, the term One Nigeria is more ideological than practical, mm. right? So what makes us so on is that we share a common territory, mm -hmm. but when it comes to interest, common peoples, the Nigerian interest is highly polarized. Mm. So the problem now becomes, how do you restructure the country in such a way that these different interests are represented properly? So that is why, for me, the idea of restructuring is basically regionalism, okay? For me, what I feel will work for Nigeria is a weak center and strong regions, and this is why I think it's so. You are more likely going to find common interests in the southwest, okay? Mm. You're more likely going to find common interests in the southeast or north central or northwest, right? So when these regions are given a level of political autonomy, mm -hmm. economic autonomy to control their region, you discover that the struggle for the presidency will reduce. Right. Because within the regions, these guys already have a reasonable level of autonomy. It's like what you see in Spain for Catalonia. Mm -hmm. It's like what you see in the United Kingdom for Scotland. These guys have their parliaments. They have a level of economic and political autonomy. So you discover that the clash for the central is little. Right. Because on a regional level, these guys push their own regional agenda do well for themselves and achieve a lot. So I think for me, restructuring is just regionalism, a weak center, and then strong regions. Right, right. and let's not um, fail to realize that Nigeria is a very, very highly ethnicized country. I mean, I think the major thing that polarizes us in this country, apart from the quest for political power, yeah. is our ethnicity. And religion. So, yes, and religion. Of course, yeah. ethnicity and religion are closely linked, and I quite agree. Mr. Mr. Yemi, what do you think about this conversation? Can we hear you? Mr. Yemi? I think I'll just echo what the last, um, what the last uh, you know, advocate said about uh, regional government. Um, from my understanding, the last time we really had uh, an effective system of governance was when we had the the regions uh, prior to the in 1966. And perhaps that's something uh, we should consider again in the future. Because if you have all the resources in the centre there, are always now giving all the states different uh, pieces of the pie to, to take from. Uh, the, where we are is to probably continue to, to be that way. Yeah, yeah so, um, of course, looking at it, we always say uh, fed, um, state units should be able to function fully. But I think what we, he, we miss, which is key, is that we look at restructuring on a state or a regional level. I feel that if we looked at it on a local government level, mm. If we brought it down to the basic thing, let's look at what's tra uh, trampling Nigeria and our security. Mm -hmm. When you watch the average American movie, you see sheriffs in town. Mm -hmm. The sheriffs in town is local government police. Let's translate it to what it is yeah, in our own Nigeria. system. Mm -hmm. So why are we arguing a state police system? The closest people that you can hold accountable and people that know the areas. Imagine, let's say, I'm from, let's say, Afipo now. Yeah. in eastern Nigeria. Mm -hmm. If policemen are picked to function in Afipo and there are children that grow up in Afipo, mm -hmm. they can spot criminals faster than anybody else. Of course, else. because can everyone knows everyone. In, and that's true, come but, but and you that's know, it would be easier if that level of organization is coming down gradually. No, no, right? you, if, because, you know, because you, start, of the, you start from, if you're looking at restructuring, you start from the ground up. You mm -hmm. don't start from the top down. And the reason why I'm most afraid of states Mm -hmm. Having this power, being let it start, let uh, starting it at the states. It's already states have kidnapped financial power of local governments. Yeah. Let you now want to grant them security powers. 
no other opposition will run in that state. With the emperors we have and the powers, governors have clearly this. Just imagine, and now not to mention names, but there's a very excited governor in the in the south south. Imagine him giving a giving a state police. He's going to burn the entire state you down. Know, you know, the, thing, the, <laughs> thing, the, 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 the thing with Nigeria is that if you look at it from that perspective, we may miss it. Right. Because Nigeria is highly polarized mm. from the center. Do you get most of the crisis we have in Nigeria, economy, politics, has, doesn't necessarily have to do with the local government. Mm. The problem is that at the center, the, the political interest is polarized, right? So it's more like a context. Why I think regionalism will work is if, for instance, those, the Southwest have their own region, right? The Southwest can say, okay, what can better work for us? What strategy of policing can work for us? I mean, if you look at it, we have things like Amoteku and the Eastern, yes, you know, so I mean, maybe this is a, a good start to if, if they are implemented, yeah. Okay, so um, up next is Kingsley. Stay with us.